How the hell did they manage to make one of the most annoying moves in the game even more annoying? How much more? More. How much more? More. What the f does that mean? Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokemon here. Today we're going to be talking about teleport in Pokemon Sword and Shield and... I'll be going through this in little sections. First, we'll be talking about, you know, how it teleport started, obviously, to now. And then we'll be talking about the different type of teleporters, um, why teleport is actually really, really good. As I'll be going through them, you guys will see. And then lastly, I'll be giving my final thoughts on should we keep teleport? As in, this is from a 6v6 OU perspective, so should teleport be banned or should we allow it? Now, as always, I'd love to know your thoughts and any like anything you guys want to see me talk about, feel free to. Link is down below to the comment section. Leave a comment is what I'm saying. And a like. And subscribe. <laughs> Just do it. I'm on my way to 300k. We're almost there, kind of. Or, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Except if you're in last place. But, oh shoot. Pokemon Cypher 2000. Okay. Anyway. So, we're going to be talking about teleport and uh, it should be a lot of fun. And lastly... My code AIM is 30% off. For those that don't know, I am partnered with G Fuel. G Fuel is a caffeinated energy drink, and you're like, oh, caffeine, no. Like, I'm, To be honest, I'm kind of similar. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of caffeine. However, they do have the hydration line, and let me tell you something. These boys be living... They be living... I got scared they opened up. I was like, oh, crap, man. I had to clean up my office. They last for a long time. This one right in front of me, for example, expires for... Slash 2023. Do you see that? It is 2021 last I checked. I don't know. Last year was kind of like a blur. But if you are 18 and older, you can pick up the caffeinated one. And if you're not, I mean, they do have the hydration line, which I personally recommend. I love the strawberry lemonade. And uh, yeah, hydration. It's caffeine free and it's very good. I have to clean up. But yeah, if y'all want to pick it up, that's it. So let's go ahead and talk about teleport. Now teleport, the way it started, and I'm just going to zoom out real quick. Or, hold up, we have the technology. I'm, I'm always really, uh, Pedro will edit this, so it's not like it really matters, right? He'll make it look good. So we have the technology. Perfect, perfect. So how did teleport start? Your first interaction with teleport was probably an Abra. And this is why I said it was one of the most annoying thing ever. Because this Abra right here, you know, you're just a kid, you get your starter, whether it be Charmander, you know, if you're cultured, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle, if you want the easy route to the game, or Charmander, if you're cultured. So, I don't care what you have to say about Charizard, and I will make a video defending that Mon with my life. Okay, oh, maybe that's the next video. Ooh, subscribe and see what happens. So, we have Abra, right? Abra's this Pokemon, you know, you run into it, you're like, oh, that's so cool, because Alakazam is one of the coolest Mons ever, right? That boy has spoons. His Mega is so cool too because he just said, oh, <laughs> spoons are cool. Let me get more. If it had been Sporks, that would have been sick. So, uh, Alex, uh, Alexam's obviously really cool, um, though maybe you're younger at this point and you weren't even able to trade or get an Alakazam. I was definitely one of those. Uh, but Alakazam, Abra, or Kadabra is really cool. So you decide to try and catch an Abra. The only move Abra knows in the original gens is teleport. So you chuck a Pokeball at it, or you try and battle it. Abra's fast as hell. It teleports away, and that's it. The battle's over. And it's a rare Pokemon, too. So it, it teleports away. It's annoying as how to fight. And not only that, when you catch it, it's so annoying to train, too, to level 16 to get a Kadabra. But when it's a Kadabra, it's a beast. But yeah, so that's how Teleport started, right? It let you get away from the battle, or let Abra get away from the battle. And now they decided to, in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they decided to make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, they made it a minus six switch, so it has the it, it has the lowest priority outside of Trick Room. It has um, uh, well, Trick Room is the lowest priority, but it has well I could I could show you real quick. But basically, it's a minus six switch, so the speed tiers go you know you go, you, go, you go zero and they go all the way to the top, and then you go to minus, and it's a minus six switch. So your opponent will more than likely move before you when you're using teleport which is very effective because it allows you to see what they're going to do and knowledge is power when it comes to Pokemon or anything really, right? If I see that my opponent switched from Ferrothorn to Heatran and I went for Teleport with my, uh, 
slow, bro, as they try to predict whatever I wanted to bring in, maybe a bulky, uh, or maybe like a Zapdos on the Feral Thorn, and they went for Teleport, or I went for Teleport, I got to see that they made that switch, and then I can, you know, switch accordingly. So after that, it's basically like going for U-Turn, but you're minus six, and you don't have to deal damage and deal damage, and this is really, really good, because it allows you to have control of what's going on. So I'll be talking about the teleporters that we have, um, and I'll be breaking them into three different category, uh, categories. So the first teleporters we have, uh, the first category, I'll tell you all three right now, but the first category we have is the just raw teleporters, right? They're Pokemon that come in, they take a hit, and they teleport out. Now that's most teleport Pokemon, but I'm going to break them in even more. So the second category we have is the, uh, the regenerator teleporters. And actually, no, the second category we have is the, uh, the wish teleporters. So that goes with Clefable as well as um, Wigglytuff. And the third category we have is the Regenerator Teleporters. So I'll be talking about the bros and the kings uh, as we go. So let's start it off. So the first one we have is obviously the regular Teleporters. And these are the Pokemon that can teleport. And they don't really do much else besides come in and take hits that they're supposed to. Blissey, for instance, comes in on Nidoking, takes an Earth Power or Sludge Wave and teleports out. Hopes to not get Sewer Power to the face, but takes an Earth Power and teleports out as you go out into your your fighting type or whatever you have for Blissey to be able to deal with it. I see that and I'm able to because that's teleport, right? It's a it's a little it's the baton, it's almost like baton pass, but it, it's like you just get on out of there, right? So. You get on out of there, Blissey gets on out of there, it sees what you do, and it gives you momentum. This is really cool because it means that Pokemon that are passive, right? Blissey is considered a passive Pokemon. Why? Because its offensive stats are trash. 10 attack, it's never using its offensive stat, right? The, the only physical move it ever uses is either Seismic Toss or Counter, both of which have nothing to do with uh, Blissey's um, actual stats, right? And um, the others are, if it's using a special attack, maybe a random flamethrower, maybe an, uh, an ice beam. Or maybe if you're crazy, you like to use Serene Grace, and that's completely fine. But this works on Blissey because Blissey obviously has amazing uh, healing, right? So we have Soft Boil. Blissey has Soft Boil. We have Teleport. This is a standard set. This is a standard set. Now, you can do whatever you want with this. But this Blissey's role is to take a hit from the special attackers and teleport out. That way you can get momentum and get in your, your breakers, right? Your, your Pokemon that are really strong, but they don't like to take hits. Examples, Weavile is one of them. Uh, Urshifu, if, if you're talking about special attackers, right? Urshifu doesn't like to take special hits, obviously. So if your opponent had like a top of Lily and they click Psychic or Moonblast, obviously Blissey can come in, teleport out. So that's the category of that. Uh, and obviously with Heavy Duty Boots, it doesn't uh, care about hazards either. When Natural Cure, it can even come in and take status. So it's, uh, it's an absorber or it happens like that. We also have Arcanine. Arcanine does something very similar. Arcanine teleports and uh, in Morning Suns and maybe Flamethrower, and then either will o -Wisp or Toxic. And previously, before I could have Teleport, Roar was an option as well. Uh, but it's something like this. It's physically defensive or special defensive. Doesn't matter. Runs heavy to boots. Its role is to come in, and in the lower tiers where Arcanine is allowed, uh, which I believe is NU. Yep, okay, it's NU, yep. I fought Arcanine a couple times. That would be your, your check to... Um, a Bronzong, a Copper Raja, whatever, a Scavalier, you come in, you take the hit, you teleport out. So the point of them is to give you momentum um, without losing much. And that's where, you know, Blissey can obviously do that because Blissey has multiple opportunities to heal. Like if your opponent has a special attacker, Blissey can usually heal on it. Now this is sometimes good and bad. And, uh, and I'm going to go through this throughout the entire time, but I feel like some people like to be teleport happy. And I, I, I know people who've played on Showdown definitely have experienced this where your opponent will take too much damage just because, oh man, I'm a Blissey, I can come in on special attackers. So they'll take too much damage from something, like maybe a Needle King uh, hit them with Sludge Wave upon entry and did like 20. And then they decided instead of healing up to take the next Sludge Wave and teleport out. So now they're around 55, right? 55, 56. And then they think, oh, well, later I can come in on top of Coco and just heal up. But no, Coco keeps going for Volt Switch or U-Turn as Blissey comes in, and that's how you repeatedly keep something with Blissey Blow. I feel like these ones are the ones that you get lost in the sauce with. This one and, and obviously the regenerated ones. And by that, I mean like the game, you just start going on autopilot. You just start losing uh, focus of what's actually supposed to be happening. And I feel like that's how a lot of people lose their Blisseys, especially when they get knocked off and you start taking hazards. So, But these are the ones that basically just come in, take the hit, recover up, uh, and just teleport out. 
and that's it. They don't have Regenerate, they don't have anything else. Obviously, there's other, uh, there's other small ones that fit the same thing. Uh, Porygon 2 is another example that does that as well, but with Trick Room and Telepurpose Trick Room is really cool as well because you can bring in your hard hitters. The same exact concept. You're teleporting and Trick Room. So that's that. Now we have the probably one of the more annoying ones from the Isle of Armor, and this this set in particular, this Pokemon, Clefable is is Clefable is is a dinosaur from Jurassic Park because it always finds a way, right? No, Clefable is life. Clefable is life because Clefable will always always find a way. During the Isle of Armor meta, right now we're in the Crown Tundra meta, even though it's been months after and whatever, some people might be sick of Sword and Shield OU, some people might not. If you're sick of Sword and Shield OU now, you were definitely sick of Sword and Shield OU in Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor because every Clefable, and even like maybe post, uh, post home, because that's where we got like a few other Pokemon into that, you might have been annoyed of it too, but uh, because with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, we were able to get Wish. Protect, teleport, and Moonblast. And why the hell is this so annoying? Because this, coupled with the fact that there was not many Pokemon that could actually break during that metagame, right? We didn't have the Legendaries. We didn't have the Tapus. We didn't have the Ultra Beasts. Uh, we didn't have Landorus, right? The strongest Pokemon during that meta, and I still think Zeraora is actually amazing now, it was Zeraora, right? It was Zeraora. And then Dragapult. Those are the strongest Pokemon, and Clefable could deal with both. Uh, depending on its set and this set in particular got rid of the idea of chip damage chip damage is when you wear down <laughs> nice chip <laughs> when you when you wear down a pokemon to the point of let's say for instance i have an explod explod what is explod known for it is known for clicking boom burst what does boom burst do it hits like a truck man it's loud it hits like a, it's it's explod's name means something loud wow Maybe it's like extra loud. I'm tired. <laughs> uh, so, right, but an x for instance, like a check to it might be a Scavalier. And I'm, I'm using these as examples, right? A check to it might be a Scavalier. A Scavalier is only a check once. Because if a Scavalier, if Choice Band Scavalier comes in on one Boom Burst, which is about 40%, it cannot come in on two more. That is chip damage, right? Oh, that's a lot of damage, but it's chip. Because you've worn it down to the point where next time you come in, you can deal with a Pokemon. This Clefable got rid of that that whole entire idea. This plus Heavy Duty Boots got rid of that whole entire idea. Why? Because I could have a size into it, right? The, the most common Pokemon in that metagame, especially because Dracovish was around, right? Uh, you have Clefable, size and Toad, Corviknight, you know, Feral Thorn. Uh, and then you had your, your Dragapult and uh, Mandibuzz, depending, Dracovish, Cinderace, depending on the metagame itself. But this was like a standard OU team at that point. Oh, 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 maybe like something like Kapowdon or whatever. Uh, maybe Hippo was around that time, I don't remember. But it was something like this, right? Uh, you'd also maybe have a Dark Resist, so Mandibuzz is also another option as well. But teams were looking like this. And... Uh, for instance, let's say you had a Dracovish, and Dracovish, the way it would be Seismic Toad was you'd crunch or, or Psychic Fangs or whatever multiple times, uh, or you try and knock off Seismic Toad, and you wear it down to the point where you can later click Ficious Wren, because that was Dracovish's big thing, right? Dracovish was broken with Ficious Wren, which is why I got banned. And um, though now we have a lot more Pokemon, in my opinion, that could take it on, but that doesn't mean it's not broken. But again, this was a standard team. This was what people ran, uh, and because of this Clefable, and because of the combination of Wish, Teleport, and Magic Guard. Magic Guard was also very important too because Clefable wasn't getting worn down. It's like wearing heavy duty boots, but it doesn't matter if you get knocked off, right? And and then some. It's like that to the is that to the highest level. It's the Tims, but you got like all the Tims right there. So that's the boots. If y'all didn't know, the boots are the Tims. Stick with me. So this Clefable would wish and teleport back to Sidentoad. It didn't matter if Sidentoad was at 2 HP. All right, or as long as Stealth Rock wasn't up, it would wish, it would teleport into Size and Toad. And because teleport goes at the end of the turn, almost always, it goes at the end of the turn, Size and Toad could come back from 2 HP all the way up to 60, 70%. And this whole concept of chip damage was gone. That's why games lasted between 60 to 150 turns on average back then. On average back then. Because again, we didn't have these breakers. So this was one of the most centralizing Pokemon in the Sword and Shield metagame, ever, that we had at a point. And again, Clef always finds a way uh, doing that. So this was particularly broken because the combination of Wish, 
teleport and Magigar was too much. Now, if Blissey could do this, it can't actually, it's not legal to have Wish plus teleport. It's it's illegal. <laughs> That's, that is the opposite of legal. Yes, it's illegal. Um, but because Clefable was able to do this and because we didn't have Kartana, like look at this team and look at SD Kartana, right? Destroys it. Absolutely destroys it. And uh, combined with the fact that Sagento was on every team because of Dracovish and it was kind of mandatory back then as well. It's crazy. This mom was like number three in usage or something. Um, it was just something that we, we couldn't break. And that's just how it was, right? Clef could come in on... Uh, like One of the best breakers back then was Nasty Bly Dragon. And its biggest flaw was... <laughs> If um, if you, like you try and set up in front of like maybe a Corviknight or something, uh, they you turn out and they go Dragapult or anything. Uh, but Nasty for Life or by Dragon was definitely one of the breakers that we had back then. But still, so this was one of the more annoying instances of teleport because it was really tough to break and we didn't have the tools. Nowadays, even if this uh, set comes back, um, it's not as threatening because we have a lot to punish, right? Um, Weavile got triple axle during the Crown Tundra, which made it an insane threat. Uh, and then there was, there was other stuff as well that ended up happening too, right? We got the Rillaboom, uh, obviously got its uh, Grassy Glide and all that stuff too. I don't remember if that was Crown Tundra after or before. I feel like that was Crown Tundra. When these mods come out, whatever. All I remember is the metagame was like this and people didn't like it. It was hella slow, all right? And teleport was just broken. It was broken in a sense because we had no way of, that's the main thing I want you to get for this. It was broken because we had no way of breaking through. But then, then, not necessarily then because this was also around during the metagame as well, but probably the most busted uh, version of Teleport currently. And this is something that is, you know, sit through, uh, the, it, it's just been there forever, right? And that is Future Sight plus Teleport plus Regenerator. This is really crazy because... I mean, I'll give the uh, the bros and the kings real quick. Oh, let me put this back to OU so it's top saying they're illegal. They are totally legal Pokemon. So you got bro and you got king. All right. This is a standard set for them. So you put regenerator, you put regenerator, and imagine these mons during Cinderace, Magirna meta, or Shifu meta, whatever. Um, let's think about Urshifu, right? Both the the water striking one we have right now, uh, so the one that clicks surging strikes, and the one that clicks wicked blow. Uh, a lot of the switches to them were the same Pokemon. Toxpex could pivot in and take a hit, and then you pivot out to another regenerated Pokemon. You pivot, and you pivot, and pivot, and you go Mandibuzz after, whatever. Um, Future Sight just got rid of all that, right? Same thing with the Surging Striker. You go for Surging Strike, Future Sight's up, Toxpex comes in, it dies to Bandit Future Sight plus, or excuse me, Bandit Surging Strikes plus Future Sight. So, Slowbro really changed the game with this because it's able to click Future Sight. So, Future Sight, if you guys didn't know, is 120 base power, and it happens two turns after being used. So, uh, not only does Slowbro have all that, but it also has recovery. And basically, this Pokemon, and also Slow King, obviously, uh, you could either put the Heavy Duty Boots or the um, Rocky Helmet. Um, it, this one is usually used for Tapu Lele and uh, Nido King and stuff like that. These EVs are just like placeholders, right? Same exact move says this one, by the way. And this one was usually used for more physically oriented Pokemon like uh, Water Shifu, um, Cinderace, and, and Hippowdon, and things like that. I could just take every hit from every Pokemon. Um, so the combination of Future Sight plus Teleport was so crazy because Slowbro could always come in, could always click Future Sight, and then not worry about what HP it was at because it had a Regenerator. So this combination of the three was so crazy. And not only on top of that, but its other moves were annoying too, right? Scald had a 30% chance to burn something. Let's say your Weavile comes in on a future site, your Dark type, or Shivu comes in on a future site uh, because they they predicted that they know it's coming out. You Scald burn them, they're dead. That's it, right? They can't break slow, bro. It has slack off for, for the immunity. It has the heavy duty boots to not care about hazards either. So this made certain Pokemon just so crazy. And this is what the current metagame we're living in right now, right? Like one of the, uh, the more common things was... Future Sight plus, uh, let's say a few Pokemon. Uh, Garchomp is one of them. Uh, especially if you're Fire Fang, you actually put something like Corviknight in range of plus two Fire Fang. Uh, it also lets you like break even through Hippo as well. Uh, Future Sight plus Curum is always really scary too because even if you're clicking Ice Beam and they go Toxapex or they're going to a Steel type, they're still taking way too much and obviously you have Earth Power as well. So like this combination of moves just allows Pokemon to hit that much harder than they normally would. And it, it it really is like centralizing in a sense, right? Um, I'm gonna go to Smogon real quick. I'm gonna go to Smogon real quick. Now they did just change this, 
But up until recently, Slow King was considered S rank in the viability rankings. Now, viability rankings are just like something that shows you how uh, people think like what's best right now. But um, Slow King, which is actually now A plus rank, was considered S rank at a point. And now when you have a Pokemon, and the reason why uh, Teleport plus Future Sight is so crazy right now is because we have so many breakers, right? A Kartana, for instance, if its Swords Dance is up and Stealth Rock are up and Corviknight comes in and takes the Future Sight and the Rocky Helmet, like it'll die to plus two knockup. It'll die to plus two Sacred Sword with a Life Orb um, as well. That looks like Gabby. <laughs> but it's just so crazy because we have like Pokemon like Weavile that can click knockoff. So there's certain mons that are, are supposed to be coming in. Like even like Clefable. Like take Clefable for instance. Clefable is, uh, if you're not running um, uh, a Dark type to deal with Dragapult, you're running Clefable, right? If you're not running Heat trying to deal with Dragon type, you're uh, like, aka Dragapult, you're running Clefable. So Clefable will come in and take the knockoff, right? Maybe 30% from, or 36% from Banded uh, Weavile. And uh, then it'll take Future Sight as well. If they're unaware, they could take rocks too. So, and if you're going for Triple Axe when you're banded, you're crazy by the way, because that move sucks when it misses. But when it hits, oof, you're doing some damage. Clefable comes in and takes that, and then they just get bopped by the Future Sight as well. So it just, it, it opens up so many opportunities, and it's just insane. And this is definitely the most like frustrating version of it too, because these Pokemon basically have no drawback. There's, there's no reason to not use them, because it's kind of hard to take advantage of a Pokemon with Regenerator, um, even if you're like momentum playing, right? By that, I mean you're you turning around every single time slow, a slow King or Slowbro, rather. Slowbro comes out with your Shifu. Sure, you're getting off 40% every single time, but it switches out. It gets back that 33% whenever it comes back in. And it's still able to click Future Sights in most cases. And in Slow King's case, a lot of Pokemon that you, let's say you go or Shifu and you turn out into Tapu Koko, shoot, you might not even kill it with Thunderbolt just because Slow King that bulky. Uh, so it's just no drawback for a lot of these Pokemon. It allows strong Pokemon that had checks to muscle through their checks. And we're definitely adapting more and more, especially because Weavile sees a lot more play. So it's definitely scarier. And uh, one of the things we see a lot of as well is, you know, Galarian Slowking and regular Slowking coming in on each other's attacks. Uh, so it's not always the easiest as it was. I think, I think we're adapting a little bit better, but it's not always as easy as it was before to just click Future Sight and, and, and get your kill. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we banned Magirna, we banned um, Single Striker Shifu, uh, we banned Cinderace uh, as well. But it's still incredibly threatening, uh, especially with the Pokemon like Specs Dragapult uh, picking up in popularity again. Dragon Dance Dragon, like the dragons in general, I think benefit some of the most. And uh, and Pokemon like Kartana, I think those are the ones that benefit the most from it. Um, and a Shifu. So like the, that's a, a huge list, but I mean it's the dragons, it's Shifu, it's Kartana. Um, they benefit some of the most, and obviously Pokemon like Zeraora as well. Uh, there's a, there's a big thing where Zeraora is one of the best late game cleaners right now because it's so fast and just bulk up knockoff, close combat, and Plasma Fist has really good coverage. And one of the best answers to it is Landers because it can repeatedly come in. Uh, it can and Buzzle as well, but it can repeatedly come in. Uh, it can take most of the hits, and if it has leftover, I mean, it will get knocked off, or at Rocky, I'm at least to get some chip of that, but like with Future Sight's wearing it down, or like a Buzz will trying to come in on Zeror, they just no longer become answers. So Future Sight plus Teleport, and it's specifically because of Teleport, so these mods are able to get in these, I, they're able to get in their teammates and just do so much work, and it's just, it's, I know it can be incredibly frustrating to play. Um, so, yeah, that's like probably the best way, or the best one of Teleport right now. Uh, of course, there is Counterplay, I'll talk about counterplay as well. Like Heatran can run Taunt, uh, for instance. So Sloking, if it gets Magma Storm and Toxics earlier, uh, it can't teleport out. And if it's Spadef Heatran, it can actually beat it 1v1. If it's already Toxic, then it landed the Magma Storm with Taunt, so it can't teleport out. You just Earth Power, Earth Power, Earth Power, and you'll take the Skulls. Um, obviously, as well, it's also predictable if the opponent wants to go out into their Dark type on a future site. So uh, you can, for sure, like if I have an Urshifu out, right? If my opponent can get an Urshifu with, with uh, kill with Surging Strikes, but I had a future site up and they have a Hydreigon out and I have maybe a Heatran in front, um, I can either stay in expecting a U turn or, or try and toxic that Hydreigon come in. So there are definitely like pros and cons to it as well. Like I said, we're, we're adapting, but it for sure has become metagame defining. Uh, teleport is just a, a metagame defining move and with the future site, with the regenerator pair, it's just like all the way up there. Like it's some of the craziest stuff we've ever seen in my opinion. Now, again, uh, I feel that, well, I want to give my thoughts, right? My, my, my honest thoughts. I, when I think about teleport, 
I think it's broken. Period. Right? I think it's broken. Um, uh, broken in the sense of the word, and then my broken isn't necessarily like uncompetitive. Uh, I, I want to separate the two. I'm not saying broken in terms of what Smogon thinks broken is or why something gets banned from Smogon. Uh, I think broken in the sense that it's like black and white one Terrakion. Now, black and white one Terrakion uh, with a choice ban was broken. We had no Lander's T. That, that, that was it. We, that's all you need to know. There was no Lander's T coming in. And Terrakion was also one of the fastest Pokemon. So, a choice ban Terrakion could always 2 a KO something or could always get a kill. It was easy to use. It was easy. And that's what I think Teleport is uh, when it turns to broken. I think I don't think it's skillless uh, because especially in high level play, you'll see people taking advantage of it really well and you'll see some nice, I like to say dancing when the opponent actually, when they're both making switches that are really excited, I like to say it's like almost like a dance, right? A choreography um, of that. And uh, you'll see some really, really, really nice uh, action around that. But I do think it's it's incredibly easy and that's why I mean broken. It's, it's so easy to use and it's very easy to abuse. But as I mentioned earlier, I think it's also easy to get lost in the sauce. And you'll see plenty of examples, even in my short on lives, of the opponents teleporting when I say I, they should not have clicked teleport right there because that just means later I'm going to be able to beat them with XYZ. So overall, I think that teleport has opened up um, a new, uh, a very, very, very new aspect in Mons, or not aspect, but a new toy that's very similar to U-Turn in Diamond and Pearl, uh, which actually people thought U-Turn was broken in Diamond and Pearl. Um, well, Diamond Purple Item, people thought U-Turn was broken back then. Uh, I mean, and to be honest, on Flygon it is. <laughs> but uh, then in Gen 5, people thought Volt Switch was broken. Volt Turn was broken, right? Because you have these Scizor, Gliscor, Rotom call cores. But as the metagame adapts, as we get more Pokemon, or less Pokemon in some cases, obviously now, uh, we tend to adapt. And I just think that while we all think it's busted now, we didn't really care too much, uh, too much about it in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee because it didn't really have... You know, first off, there wasn't as much play in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, right? Not everybody was playing that metagame. Uh, secondly, lack of items and lack of hazard control as well made teleport not always the best move to go for. Since uh, you, you take stealth rock damage and then you're too ago by Megazam or whatever. Uh, so I just think that it is just a little bit too early for us and that the people that think that it should be banned, uh, maybe it just needs to be drawn out more, right? We're in one generation. And uh, as generations move on and, and years go by, uh, we adapt and we change things too. Um, and uh, f as an example of that, current uh, Gen 6, and in my previous one I talked about how Corviknight was the best one, and then uh, people said, no, it was Talonflame, and Gen 6 OU Talonflame is the GOAT. Yeah, during past Gen 6 OU, and I'm using this as an example because it's in the lead up to something. Past Gen 6 OU, Talonflame was the GOAT. Tr current Gen 6 OU, or SOU, uh, people do play in tours. There are actually a lot of tours that play in Gen 6 OU, and Talon Flame is considered C rank. Um, and those that's current Gen 6. And that is the that is the I'm gonna see if I can find it. But um or ask here it is. Viability rankings. That's UU. That is not what I'm looking for. Or as OU viability rankings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, should be right here. Talonflame is, as you can see, it is, shoot, bro, where you at? Hello? Did I just miss it? Oh, it's B, oh, I actually moved it to B rank. Oh, congratulations, Talonflame. But it's B rank, right? So it's not like the t the threat that we all, look at all these Pokemon above it. And then a lot of these Pokemon lose Talonflame. Uh, that's just because the metagame has started to adapt. And look at Clef, always finding his way. So the metagame has adapted, the metagame's changed, and that's just like years work, right? Back then, and even during like, you know, years ago during Hita Fajita times and when we played Oras, I thought Talithane was the GOAT. Uh, but now when you play in tournaments, it's just not as good as it was. People have adapted, people change, the metagame shifts. You know, you'll see at one point, if Megas come back, at a point, we thought Mega Altari was broken. And then it became Mega Alakazam was broken. And then it became Mega Metagross is broken. And then it stayed Mega Metagross is broken. But uh, just like to give you guys like examples. So I think that it's just too... It's still new for us and we're still figuring things out and we still only have limited tools to be able to think about it. But, you know, who knows, right? For for a while, uh, Dragon Inch Dragapult was amazing during Dynamats metagame. And then it became the Heavy Duty Boots. Uh, then it became Specs. And then Specs changed to Heavy Duty Boots Thunder Wave because Clefable started running uh, Spadef. And then it went back to Specs with Hex. And then Dragapult kind of fell off for a little bit. 
and now Dragapult Choice Specs is amazing again. So, right, so metagames follow shifts, and I think the same thing with Teleport. Uh, we just need to adapt, and we're, we're, we're still waiting, and honestly, a year from now, who knows? And if Teleport's the same in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and whatever the next game is after Legends of Arceus, since that's not something I can battle my friends in, uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, those are my final closing words on Teleport. Let me know your guys' thoughts. What do you guys want to see me talk about next? And uh, leave a like, subscribe, check out my merch because today is the actual last day to get it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.